Hi, my name is Susan Abramson, the rabbi of Temple Shalom Emmeth in Burlington, Mass., and the author of the Rabbi Rocket Power series of children's books featuring Rabbi Rocket Power, the first ever female rabbi superhero. Today we are going to learn about Catholicism. St. Margaret's and St. Malachy's Catholic churches are the two largest religious institutions in town. In this episode, we will focus on St. Margaret's, the oldest and largest of the two churches, with over 6,500 parishioners and over 500 children in its religious school. We will hear from Father Frank Silva, take a tour of the facilities, learn about the beliefs, unique traditions, and rituals of the Catholic faith, and hear the choir sing a couple of songs. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking. Though the time be far, I know that come it will. When each nation shall each other bless, peace the earth shall fill. God shall reign over the earth on that day. God shall be one, your name it shall be one. Father Silva, thanks so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here, and uh, I, I've enjoyed having you on our Burlington Interfaith Clergy Council for all of these years. Mm -hmm. And I just had, in this episode, I wanted to really discuss uh, Catholicism to educate all of us about mm -hmm. what's unique about your faith and, and maybe some misconceptions and things that I've always had questions about. But first, I wanted to start off by asking you to tell us a little bit about you personally, how you came to be a priest and how you came to be at St. Margaret's. Okay, well, thank you, Rabbi Abramson, for putting the, this series of programs together. I'm sure it will be a great help to the folks who watch it and particularly those here in Burlington where we have such a diversity of religious expressions and faith traditions and the like. Um, I've been Catholic all my life. Mm -hmm. um, shortly after I was born, my parents brought me down to our local church where I was baptized and then raised within that Catholic household. Um, actually, um, I have six sisters and three brothers. Wow. And um, myself, I was able to go through a Catholic grammar school, mm -hmm. onto a Catholic high school, very much influenced by the religious women and men who staffed those schools at that time, um, the religious sisters known as the uh, Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur, mm -hmm. and in the high school level, the Zaverian brothers. Certainly, with the family background and um, being raised in a Catholic uh, household, um, having the influence of Catholic education and the like, the question of what one should do with your life, what one's vocation is, was always being posed. And as time went on, and I find myself certainly drawn to uh, the work that I saw priests doing within my own parish especially, it uh, had an appeal about it. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, I was in my first year of college um, that I decided, I think I might like to try this thing called priesthood. Mm -hmm. So I applied to a seminary in Boston, um, was accepted, and I guess you could say the rest is history. Mm -hmm. um, that was 48 years ago wow. um, that I did that. I've been a priest now for 40 years um, with assignments throughout the Archdiocese of Boston, which is basically eastern Massachusetts. And then four years ago, uh, Cardinal Sean O'Malley appointed me as pastor of St. Margaret's Parish here in Burlington. Thank you so much, and, and, and we're glad that, that your path uh, led you to St. Margaret. So the next question, mm -hmm. what, what, the, what you feel are the very basic tenets or the most important tenets of your faith? Mm -hmm. Our Christian faith is um, based upon understanding that God has revealed himself to us um, as one God, mm -hmm. but in three distinct persons, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Spirit. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, looking upon the Father as the creator of mm -hmm. all things, mm -hmm. visible and invisible. And Jesus, his Son, who is all, is all God and all human, so mm -hmm. um, God and man, came to redeem us of our sins and to free us from our sins, so he's the Redeemer, and the Spirit of God, or the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. um, is the one who continues to sanctify um, us, providing us, if you will, the grace, the help, the strength that we need 
uh, to live faith-filled lives. Well, thank you so much. This has been very, very enlightening. And let's go on over to uh, St. Margaret's. Let's do it. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Here we are in the steps of St. Margaret's Church, and Father Silva, thank you so much for inviting us in. Very happy to have you here today, Rabbi, and it's a delight that you've come to visit us and hopefully learn a little bit more about uh, Catholics here, particularly at St. Margaret's Parish. Excellent. So let's let's go, in. go on in. Please, step Thank inside. You. Here we are in the vestibule of the church where people come forward and we greet them as they come here to celebrate Mass or other services uh, throughout the church year. Someone who spent a great deal of time here for almost half the history of um, the parish, and that is Father John Crispo, mm -hmm. who passed away 10 years ago in a tragic car accident. Mm -hmm. I know that you were very familiar with him during the years. Yeah, he, he, was, he was one of the first clergy I met when I first came to Burlington. Okay, Rabbi, welcome you into the main portion of the church, the nave of the church where mm -hmm. the congregation gathers. We have a very significant sized church here. It will hold roughly 650 people. Wow. Um, not included, maybe another 50 that could be up in the choir loft. Mm -hmm. Right now at the very front of the church mm -hmm. and behind me is what we call the sanctuary of the church. Mm -hmm. It's the central focus, if you will, uh, for the worship that, that we offer to God. The center point, of course, being the altar, mm -hmm. where um, the, what we call the sacrifice of the Mass, the Holy Eucharist, that is the principal sacrament of the church. And, and what does the word sacrament mean? The sacrament, if you look at the word, um, comes from the Latin phrase meaning holy, mm -hmm. and so obviously we recognize the holiness of what's taking place. But even go deeper than that, um, we would believe that a sacrament is something that is concrete that you can see. So when we offer the sacrifice or the sacrament of the Eucharist, there's bread and wine. The word Eucharist, what does that mean exactly? Eucharist may actually means Thanksgiving. I understand that there are seven sacraments? There are seven true? sacraments. Very easy to list off. Baptism, Confirmation, and Eucharist, which are the first sacraments an individual will receive as sacraments of initiation in the church. Mm -hmm. um, the sacrament of reconciliation, um, which would be um, off, uh, receiving the forgiveness that God offers. The anointing of the sick, mm -hmm. um, particularly if one is close to death, to know that they're walking with God you know, into um, eternal life. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the two sacraments of service. Um, one is marriage, mm -hmm. and then the sacrament of holy orders. Holy orders um, would be a sacrament received either by a deacon, a priest, or a bishop. Rabbi, what we have here is our reconciliation room in St. Margaret's Church. Some people may even refer to it as the confessional. And in this reconciliation room, the option is given to the person making his or her confession to either remain anonymous mm -hmm. or to, let's say, go to confession face to face with the priest who would be receiving that confession. They remain anonymous by coming in and kneeling at this kneeler here, mm -hmm. and the priest is behind um, the structure where he cannot see the individual, he obviously can hear the person in the mm -hmm. confession, but is able to celebrate the sacrament with them at that point. Mm -hmm. If they want to go face to face, um, there is a chair here for the penitent. Mm -hmm. Rabbi, as you saw in the church, we have several statues of saints mm -hmm. in the church, as well as other religious items referring to the saints. And it's not uncommon even to see statues outside. Even many Catholic families will have a statue, perhaps in their front lawn or in a little grotto that they've created. Here at St. Margaret's, we have the statue of our Blessed Mother outside. And it, again, as it is with the other statues, we're not here to worship these um, statues or these individuals, right. but rather be, be mindful that these folks uh, have completed their life journey. They live lives of virtue that we're meant to emulate and the like. And through their intercession, pray, uh, having them intercede for us, we believe that uh, we have um, further help in order to live the type of faith, uh, the life of faith that God has called us to live. We're here in the rectory mm -hmm. of St. Margaret's Parish. Um, some may not be familiar with the word rectory, but right. it's the same thing as a parsonage or mm -hmm. the, um, the pastor's house. So priests, um, again, would normally live in a rectory mm -hmm. um, where they're provided the room and board, um, obviously be part of their um, package, if you will. But basically, it is for offices and the residents uh, for, for the priests. 
Hi, my name is Shane. I've been a parishioner at St. Margaret's ever since I was born, and I've been serving for five years. Um, this is the holy water font. As Catholics, we come in, um, we dip our fingers in the holy water font and bless ourselves with the sign of the cross and as we prepare to enter the sanctuary and prepare for the beginning of Mass. Hello, my name is Chuck Hannafin. I have been a member of St. Margaret's Parish since this church actually opened in 1956. We're now standing here at the altar, and you'll notice one of the most prolific things when you walk into the church, you'll see a mosaic of the risen Christ. That represents uh, the holiest of holy, holy days for us here in the Catholic Church. You'll see beneath that is the crucifix, which represents the passion, suffering, and death of Christ. And below that is the tabernacle. From the water and blood that flowed from Christ's side, we now have the tabernacle inside the tabernacle for Catholics. This is the consecrated host which takes place during the Mass, which represents and is in fact the body, the blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. There are stored Eucharist in this tabernacle that people do devotion and pray before the tabernacle. We also will bring Eucharist to those that are homebound in nursing homes. To signify that Christ is in the tabernacle, you will see here a vigil candle. And this candle is lit 24 hours a day and lets anybody know that's committed to the church that Christ is in fact in the tabernacle. My name is Bill McDade. I've been a member of St. Margaret's Church since I moved to Burlington some 40 years ago. The cross with the body of Jesus attached is a symbol of the sacrifice that Jesus made in atonement for all the sins of the world. The crucifix represents God's love for all of mankind and his timeless sacrifice which frees all of us from sin. And it can heal and redeem all who turn to him. And it is a reminder to us that we should pick up our crosses that we engage and, and find in our daily lives. Hello, my name is Kyle Colusi, and I've been part of the St. Margaret's Church my whole life. This is a statue of the Blessed Mother, and she is a key part of our um, Catholic community, and she is a center of worship that is, she is the mother of Jesus Christ. Hello, I'm Rona Hannafin. My name is Faith Steiner. And this is the Roman Missal. It's used for the prayers and directives of the Mass and the special feast days throughout the year. Uh, my name is Mary Peck and I've been a parishioner of St. Margaret's for over 50 years. And uh, my work here is as a sacristan and um, he had to explain about the paten and the chalice and the sacred vessels used in the celebration of Mass. And the bread is put on the paten and the wine is put on the chalice, in the chalice. The priest celebrates Mass and it is our belief that with the celebration of the water and the wine they become the body and blood, the mystical body of Christ. Hello, my name is Father Jiwon. I'm here to tell you something about baptismal font. Um, this is where we become Christians by uh, having the priest bless the water to, to make it holy water and by pouring water on, on the person's head by praying, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God blesses the person and the person is reborn in Jesus Christ by professing their faith in Jesus and also um, becoming a new creation. When a baby is baptized, the parent or godparent will profess the faith for them, and they will promise to raise the child in the faith of the church. The rosary is a special devotion to Mary, our Blessed Mother. It consists of reciting a repetition of prayers while reflecting on various key moments in the life of Jesus Christ. The rosary can be prayed as a private devotion over the group of people. Hi, I'm the Jack O'Keefe. I've been a parishioner since 1961. Uh, these are the vestments that are used in the, uh, during the different services and different times of the year. Uh, you'll note that the colors are purple, green, white, and red. The green is for ordinary time, the white is generally for 
weddings and baptisms, read it for the um, uh, uh, for a matter, and then the purple would be used at Lent times. Over here on my left is the Easter candle. It's lit for the first time during the Easter vigil, the night before Easter. It's also lit when someone comes into the church as a baptized child and one, when uh, a person is taken out of the church at uh, a funeral. It is a reminder of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. We Catholics believe in, during the Mass and also when we uh, stand before the Eucharist, we really believe that God is really present. To acknowledge His presence and also show our reverence, there are three ways to, uh, three gestures we can make. One is bowing, the other is standing upright, and the last, the most reverent way is kneeling. So here in the church, in the pews, we have these kneelers to facilitate that. So during the Mass, when the Eucharist is raised, and the, the part that Jesus is here, we kneel to show our reverence for Him and our love for Him. My name is Rosemary Hannafin Farrow. I've been a parishioner here at St. Margaret's all my life. Um, I'm going to talk today about the Stations of the Cross. The Stations of the Cross are found in most Catholic churches. It's 14 pictures um, depicting the events of Christ's passion, His suffering and death, on the cross um, and each one of these pictures represent an event along the way of his passion. As altar servers uh, we assist the priest during mass and we help him bring with bringing up the gifts, holding the book and um, being close to the altar. We are really honored to be a part of this sacrifice. I love being here because I get to be close to the Mass, and we get to serve all of the gifts. I love um, serving Mass because I know that doing this might bring us closer to God and um, closer to us all. I like serving Mass because I really like to watch it all happen like right in front of me, and it helps me to understand more about my faith. I've only been altar serving for one year now and it's one of my favorite things to do. Hi, I'm Mary Frances Meehan, the music director at St. Margaret's in Burlington. We start our mass with a gathering song and then we have a psalm between our two readings, one reading from the Old Testament and one from the New. And then we have an alleluia before the gospel is read. Then in preparation, we sing a choral selection as the gifts are being prepared. Next, there is usually two communion songs, one of which is a choral piece done by the choir, and of course, a recessional before we leave. We have a cantor who introduces the songs for the assembly to sing, and the choir's role is to enhance that. And hopefully, the words in the melody will stay with the parishioners when they leave this holy place. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore Him. Praise Him, angels sing the light. Sun and moon rejoice before Him. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise the Lord, for He has spoken. Words His mighty words obey. Lord, 
In the Christian world, there is a calendar that we observe that begins in Advent um, with a preparation period that leads us to the celebration of Jesus' birth at Christmas. We then move into a Christmas season to then come into the season of Lent, a penitential season of the church that leads us up to the great celebration of Jesus' resurrection at Easter time. Following the Easter season, we continue the cycle of the year with what we call ordinary time, which is a reflection upon Jesus' life and ministry and what he is called to in faith. So here we are in one of the classrooms at uh, St. Margaret's uh, Education Building, and I'm pleased to be here with Jonathan, Jacqueline, and Nicholas, who are three students here at, uh, at St. Margaret's. I wanted to ask you guys to tell me about Christmas. Maybe Jacqueline, since you've got the microphone, you can tell us a little bit about what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all about um, when Jesus was born and how he was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And people celebrate that not for the presents or because Santa Claus comes, but because our Savior was brought to the to this world. Honestly, I agree with her a lot. Like you know, Christmas is all about when Jesus was born. He's the Savior and he's Son of God. So it's a really important day. Mm -hmm. It's not about Santa Claus coming or you should be giving you presents and oh, being pretty. Mm -hmm. But it's about when he was born. I'm Connor Custance, and I would like to talk about Ash Wednesday. On Ash Wednesday, we get blessed with ashes, and it's, it, it marks the beginning of Lent. Hi, I'm Charlotte Scola, and I would like to talk about Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is when Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem and was welcomed with palms. It is also the beginning, well, the start of Holy Week. Hi, my name is Jack Damon. I want to talk about Holy Thursday. Um, we celebrate Holy Thursday because it is um, Jesus' last supper with his apostles. Hi, my name is Charlie Hannafin, and we remember Good Friday as a time when Jesus died on the cross for our sins and opened the gates of heaven. So I also wanted to ask you guys about uh, Easter because I know that's also one of your most important holidays. First of all, is that more important than Christmas or less or the same or? Well, I'd say Easter is about just as important because it's about Jesus and it was when he rose from the dead. And it's not about just kind of like Christmas. It's not about the Easter money giving you like going on Easter egg hunt and you know, find all the candy inside. It's about when Jesus rose from the dead, truly. Uh, to add on, I want, uh, it was when Jesus unlocked the gates to heaven so everyone else that was worthy of going to heaven could uh, go up to heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's also about how important it what that day was when they went to a stone tomb and couldn't find his body. Well, I really just agree with them. Like, both of them are really important holidays mm -hmm. and like they said, it's not about like the presents you get from it. It's mm -hmm. about um, like like when um, Jesus rose from the dead for Easter and mm -hmm. when Jesus was born um, for Christmas. So here we are in St. Margaret's Religious School building and it's my pleasure to introduce Pat Harris, who's the Director of Education, is that the correct title? here at St. Margaret's, and I just wanted to talk to her a little bit about uh, what you teach here at, at St. Margaret's. We have what's called Sacraments of Initiation, which brings people into the church. Um, the, baptism is the first step, and that happens when you're an infant, and mm -hmm. that is um, a consecration to, to, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then in second grade, we continue the process where they um, learn how to go to confession, which is really a way of talking to the priest as, as um, God's emissary here mm -hmm. and to ask for forgiveness for things that have gone wrong in their lives. Mm -hmm. And that prepares them for Eucharist, communion, which is the central part of our Mass. Mm -hmm. And we believe that the body and blood of Christ come to the bread and wine when it's um, offered up by the priest during Mass. And so it, very, it, it is um, the pinnacle of our, our religion. And so the second graders prepare to um, receive that for the first time, and then that'll carry them through their lives. Mm -hmm. the, the third piece of that, the sacraments of initiation, is confirmation. That comes in 10th grade. We ask, we believe in a trinity, and so we have Jesus, 
God the Father and the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit acts as our link between us and God. Mm -hmm. And so we ask in confirmation that the Holy Spirit come to us and grant us mm, the fulfillment of all our gifts so that we can be the best supporters of our religion we can be. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's really our way of saying, okay, you're ready to be an adult, part of our church. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for future episodes featuring other churches, Islam, Hinduism, and other faith communities in Burlington and the surrounding area. In the meantime, Shalom, Salam, Shanti, Peace. <laughs>